There are two ways to make a summer sports car. There's the mini way, which is to take your two-door coupe and just chop the roof off. Or there's the Mazda way, which is to start from the ground up as a two-seater convertible and then add on the hardtop. I actually did a comparison between this and its RF hardtop brother, which you can check out up here. But between these two cars, which one is a better summer sports car? Well, let's drop the tops and let's go for a drive. So between these two cars, this one is more powerful. This is actually the JCW version. And from its two liter turbocharged engine, it produces 228 horsepower and 235 pound-feet of torque. The Mazda MX-5 on the other hand has a two liter engine as well, but it's naturally aspirated. And it produces 181 horsepower and 151 pound-feet of torque. Because of the turbocharger, the engine in this Mini Cooper doesn't really need to be revved all that much. It has plenty of torque down low in the RPM range. The Mazda MX-5 on the other hand, it needs to be revved to get the most out of it. Peak torque is at around 4,000 RPMs and the peak power figure is at around 7,000 RPMs. The interesting thing though is that the Mazda MX-5 has a faster 0 to 100 km an hour time than this JCW Mini Cooper. Partially, that's due to the fact that rear-wheel drive cars are a little bit easier to get off the line than front-wheel drive cars, but I suspect mostly because that Mazda MX-5 is significantly lighter than this Mini Cooper. However, given a long enough road, say quarter mile or even longer, then the Mini Cooper would catch up to that Mazda and overtake it. In terms of fuel economy, obviously the Mazda is the more fuel efficient of the two. It's rated for 7 liters per 100 kilometers on a highway and 9 liters per 100 kilometers in a city. This JCW Mini is actually not that bad, or I should say not that far off from those fuel economy numbers. Officially, it is rated at 7.1 liters per 100 kilometers on a highway and 9.4 liters per 100 kilometers in a city. When it comes to shifting gears, you have two options with the MX-5. You can get a 6-speed automatic or what I have here, which is a six-speed manual. And this manual is the best one that you can buy right now. You can quote me on that. It is fantastic. The clutch is really nice and light, but it lets you know where the bite point is. And this shifter always goes into the correct gear and it has a satisfying mechanical feel to it. In the Mini Cooper, it unfortunately only comes with an eight-speed automatic with the convertible that is. If you want a six-speed manual in that, then you have to opt for the hardtop version of the JCW Cooper. But this eight-speed automatic is actually pretty good. The shifts are nice and smooth in the green and normal drive modes, and they are really sharp in the sport mode. And they're also really quick to react to your inputs in that sport mode as well. So if you want to use the paddle shifters or the gear selector, you have that option. When it comes to stopping, both cars come equipped with four piston Brembo calipers on the front axle. On the JCW, they are standard. On the Mazda, they are part of the sport package. Brake pedal feel is excellent in both cars, with very little effort needed when driving on city streets. But both cars can stop on a dime when you're on a winding road or on a racetrack. The MX-5 though feels like it can stop a tiny bit quicker thanks to its light weight, but the Mini is not far off. As for the handling, the Mazda feels like it's the more playful of the two cars. You can be nice and smooth with the inputs, in which case it'll go really quickly around, let's say a racetrack or an autocross course 
or even on a twisty and winding mountain road. But if you're more aggressive with your throttle inputs and your steering inputs, then it becomes much more tail happy. However, that's not really a big of an issue because you can easily catch a tail when it steps out of line. The Mini still is a very sporty driving car, but you do feel a bit more torque steer under hard acceleration. However, put the traction and stability control into dynamic mode and it'll want to step out of line just a little bit on a corner entry to better rotate the car as you exit out of a corner. However, between the two cars, this MX-5 is definitely the more driver oriented car. And for me personally, I still prefer a rear wheel drive car over a front wheel drive car any day. The standard Mazda MX-5 is actually a pretty comfortable little sports car, but this one is the GSP or club in the United States and it comes with Bilstein shocks. These shocks do firm up the ride just a little bit, as you can probably hear from my voice that keeps going up and down as I drive over bumps. But it's not completely unbearable on city streets. However, you probably will want to avoid some of the bigger potholes and manhole covers just to give yourself a more comfortable ride. As for the ride in the Mini Cooper, it's actually not that bad. Just like in the Mazda though, you might want to avoid some of the bigger potholes and manhole covers, but for daily commutes, it's not bad. However, this particular Mini Cooper actually has adaptive dampers. So in comfort and green mode, they're at their softest setting, but as soon as you switch it into sport mode, they become really, really stiff. And as you may or may not be able to see from my man boobs, it's a very uncomfortable ride. Honestly, I probably would be more comfortable if I wore one of these, but that would just look very wrong. Honestly, sport mode is best saved for race tracks, autocross tracks, or just really smooth um, canyon or mountain roads. In terms of interior space here in the MX-5, I have about, ooh, I'd say a million, billion, trillion kilometers of headroom with the top down. With the top up, it's actually not that bad. I still have quite a bit of headroom. My hair isn't brushing up against the roof. Legroom though is a different story. As you can see, my knee is touching up against the dashboard. I realize that I am above average in height at six foot four, but if only Mazda made the wheelbase maybe two inches longer, then I can have a little bit more legroom. However, c'est la vie. In terms of small item storage, there is a little bit of space right here in front of the shifter for your cell phone. There is no glove box, but instead you do have a bit of space right here in between the seats for certain items. And you also have three cup holders, well, or at least three positions. So there's one here, which you can take out and then put in one of the two slots right in between the driver's seats. And you also have a tiny, tiny bit of storage right here for a small wallet or some change. As for trunk space, it has about 130 liters of cargo volume, which is on the small side, but it's good enough for a couple of backpacks. Maybe take the wife or the girlfriend out for a weekend getaway. Anyway, let's check out the Mini. In the Mini, as you can see, I still have about a million, billion, trillion miles of headroom with the top down. With the top up, I actually have a little bit more headroom than in the MX-5, but I also have legroom, which is really nice. In terms of storage space in the Mini, it has a couple of cup holders right in front of the shifter, as well as a little bit of storage right in front of those. There's storage in the door panels. It has a proper glove box for unique items. And I would even argue that the back seats are storage because honestly, there's literally no leg room at all. Oh, and also there's not really any storage in here because this is actually where the wireless phone charging is. As for the trunk, it has 170 liters of cargo volume, which obviously is more than the Mazda MX-5, but the trunk opening is quite tight. However, with the roof up, you can actually detach a couple of levers and open up the bottom half of the roof, making the trunk opening a little bit bigger. 
but the roof has to be up. Otherwise, you can't do it. When it comes to pricing, that Mazda MX-5 GSP, or club as it's known in the United States, starts at $37,200 Canadian. With the sport package that it has on it, it's around $43,600 Canadian. Ironically, that's the same starting price as this Mini Cooper JCW convertible. But it does have a few extra options on it, like the Premier Plus package for $7,300. In the United States, you also have the iconic and signature trims to choose from, as well as a few standalone options, just like here in Canada. But the as-tested price of this 2022 Mini JCW Cooper convertible is $56,500 Canadian. Ouch. But with the higher price, you do get more stuff in the Mini. For example, it has a larger 8.8-inch touchscreen with navigation, HD backup camera, parking sensors, adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning, forward collision alert, head-up display, heated seats, heated steering wheel, wireless phone charging, Apple CarPlay, but unfortunately no Android Auto, and automatic climate control to name but a few. In the Mazda, you get heated seats, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, blind spot sensors, backup camera, Bluetooth, AC, power windows, keyless entry, and push button start. Basically, all that you would ever really need. As I said, this particular MX-5 also came equipped with the Sport Package, which adds the Brembo brakes, 17-inch BBS wheels, and the excellent Recaro seats. As for the roof in the Mazda MX-5, it's a manual folding top, but it can be quickly taken up or down in about 5 seconds. With the top up, over-the-shoulder visibility is hampered a bit, but the MX-5 is equipped with blind spot sensors as standard. With the top down, visibility is excellent. In the JCW Mini, it is a power operated roof and it has two positions. One pull of the switch retracts a portion of the roof so that you have a sunroof. Pull on the toggle switch again and the roof folds into the back. However, when it's in the down position, it blocks about half of the rearward visibility so that all you see is the roofs of SUVs and trucks. Never mind cars. Over the shoulder visibility with the roof up is better than that of the Mazda. So of these two, which one is the better summer sports car? Well, the MX-5 definitely feels like more of the driver's car than the Mini Cooper. It's lightweight and agile steering just make it so much more fun and enjoyable around a twisty mountain road. Don't get me wrong, the Mini Cooper is still a lot of fun, especially when you compare it against something like the Ford Mustang EcoBoost or the Golf GTI. But in terms of actual driving enjoyment, I'd personally pick the MX-5, even though I can't really fit in it. Please Mazda, give us another two inches of legroom. Actually, I'll even settle for one inch extra of legroom, please. Obviously the Mini is much more practical, but I still prefer the Mazda. What do you prefer? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, if you want to know more about both of these cars, I wrote a comparison review of them over on my website. You can find that link in the video description. And as always, I will see you in the next car or truck or most likely an SUV. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.